am 27 and this is my second chance at life. So this is not an ordinary story. Scene 1, exterior, outdoor setup, a road shoot in Bhopal. I was 24. It was my first experience being on a set. A local production team we didn't know, a bus full of actors, a hot sweltering day in Madhya Pradesh. A direction team I had met only two months ago. And yet, the one thing I will never forget is the cab ride back home. Six fulfilled but exhausted assistant directors leaned on each other's shoulders as we awaited dinner. Scene two, interior, corridor set up, night. I was 22. I was in a small European student apartment somewhere in Prague, trying to memorize all the protocols that I had learned from my professors in Prague about being on a film set, holding a professional camera for the very first time. My first taste at adventure. Scene three, interior, bedroom setup, day. I was 18. I spent three days refusing to get out of bed, delaying the submission of the admission forms of the medical colleges that I had spent more than three years preparing for. My dad walked in with some printouts about a mass communication course, and somehow the wet ink on those papers sealed and imprinted my destiny forever. Scene four, exterior, street setup, day. I was 15 walking the cobbled streets of a very tiny Italian town, running lines in my head for a role I was about to play in a, a play that we were going to perform, looking at the artists who were hosting us as their eyes sparked with joy, and they breathed the air of freedom, a freedom I craved, but much later attained in life. Scene five, montage. I was 13 and writing my first play. I was nine and publishing my first poetry, and I was five and debuting on stage as a lead actor for a school annual concert with a 102 fever, but an inner will so strong that concerned parents, teachers, or even God himself could not have stopped me for de from delivering my two hour long performance that day. So why am I telling you all this? Well, I'm young, I have a long road ahead to go, so what am I doing here in amidst all these accomplished stalwarts worthy of speaking on this stage? Because if there is one thing that I have always had and honed and learned limitlessly about through my limited experiences in life is passion and the freedom and power that comes by living a life that's fueled by it. My dad's display picture on WhatsApp for years has been this poem by William Henley from 1875 and he has, doesn't know it, but I look at it at least once a day. And this is an excerpt that I've memorized that drives me. Out of the night that covers me, black as pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Because it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the captain of my fate. I am the master of my soul. So passion is energy. It is the fire that burns within you, that keeps you going against insurmountable challenges. But not every passion is meant to become your life's purpose. We all know that. But when there's an unquenchable thirst inside you that keeps you going even when the odds seem to be stacked against you, that's when you know it's worth pursuing. And at a very nascent stage in life, I realized that I had a passion for telling stories. But for people not born with the privilege of risking financial instability, passion and profession are all mostly an either or choice. So I set out to become a doctor. Hated every part of the journey, but endured the struggle because I was very clear about one thing. I wanted to give myself the life that I thought I deserved and not wait for anyone else to make it happen for me. I did not realize the weight of this decision until years later when I finally steered my direction towards something closer to my liking, which was advertising. I'd still get to write, that's how I justified it to myself. But nothing, nothing compared to the joy I felt when stories and creations in my head and imagination took actual life form for the world to see. But like I said, this is not an ordinary story. Scene six, interior, ICU setup, day. 
I was blinded by the bright hospital lights, intimidated by empty hospital procedure rooms. My body had crashed. I almost died. Woke up, went into a coma. Came back with no memory of the days that had passed me by in oblivion. 50 metal staples on my stomach. A piece of my mom's liver where mine once was. I cannot tell you the amount of nights and days I have spent in tears and fear because I was handed a manual on life as it should be lived henceforth. Masks to cover my face, medicines to keep me alive daily, unlimited exposure to people, slow, stress-free life, and basically a time of death on all the dreams that I had dreamed so far. But something in me said that this wasn't it for me. I had a calling, and that's when I stumbled upon something that Rumi wrote that I still haven't been able to forget. Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you love. It will not lead you astray. But what do you do when you just can't? When you're hooked to IVs and you can't? When you have to rush to the hospital and you can't? What do you do when you're immunocompromised for life and you just can't? I'm a filmmaker now. And with no guide, no help, no one to reach out to in the industry, to now having a work family, I am thankful every day that I made this decision of following my passion. I wake up excited to know what life has in store for me. And I go to bed every night feeling full of bliss and gratitude to be able to follow what I really, really love and make a life that's fueled by it. So yeah, life does seem like a very glamorous Yashraj film at this point, but it all comes at a cost, the behind the scenes of it. The Anurag Kashyap version, if I may. And that's not often spoken about. So here it is, six very important points that we must all have realized. And for us, who, for those of us who are still learning, must keep in mind when we make the decision to follow our passion. One, take responsibility. You steer the wheel. When you choose to follow your passion, it's a choice you make every day. There is no giving up, there is no turning back. You are responsible for every failure, every success. Well, you steer the wheel, but that's great. Because now you can write the screens of your own screenplay. Two, everything is personal. When you love what you do so much, it becomes an extension of yourself. So the heartbreaks, the rejections feel like heartbreaks, but the achievements, piecing together that jigsaw of your life that you've been envisioning since you were four, five, and being able to finally see that picture complete itself, the happiness is unmeasured. Three, harness your superpower. I had my transplant seven years ago. I've undergone six procedures since then. I've collectively spent about five months in hospital beds just lying in pain. I'm sick four months on an average in a year. I've been in this industry for three years now. I've lost at least two huge opportunities that I can recall because of unforeseen health complications. But if there is one thing that has kept me going through it all, it's my willpower. I know that if my mind decides to do something, it will get my body to do it. I have worked through dengue because my body refused to show symptoms. I've been jaundiced in Chennai on a shoot and ran through pain shooting up and down my leg. And I've also been, lost a lot of great opportunities because I needed the rest. But if there is one thing that I haven't stopped doing, is showing up again and again and again, ready to give it my all. Because with her strong will, I will. And this is an Among Ajaiswal original. Four, the balance between faith and fear is very tricky. Faith can mean different things for different people. When I was fighting to restart my life, I had a lot of faith in my ability to handle life the way it was thrown at me. But for a family and parents who had just rediscovered their daughter and brought her back from the literal clutches of death, didn't fully understand what could go wrong by sending her out into this world, 
and a daughter who was also notoriously famous for being rebellious. They needed to have faith in more than my word to be able to make this decision. So they anchored their decisions in the faith they had in God and the universe, while I anchored mine in myself. Our faiths, though diverse, did help us navigate some really tough decisions as a family. Because the fears around you are constantly going to keep going on like that voice that keeps annoying you at the back of your head. But it is very important to rationalize where your inner voice stops and where you begin to just absorb the fears, absorb the fears that people are externally instilling in you. Although it is important to pay attention to your fears because they might be trying to help you see something that you otherwise might not have. Your fears are those parts of you that help you make the adjustments that ultimately lead to your growth. The difference between fear and rational thought is a journey. It's one that keeps on going on throughout life. So pay attention to your fears because if your voice tells you that there's something that you're not prepared for, maybe you need to be better prepared. If it tells you something isn't right, maybe it isn't. Five. Hustling is humbling. I was in Delhi recently because my grandmother was hospitalized. And while I spent her waking hours by her side on the dining table, I spent every additional minute, day or night, working on a deck I had to submit in two days, taking calls and meetings for an upcoming shoot I had. Unpopular opinion and contrary to what social media might has, have us believe these days, hustling during the ages that you're trying to build your empire in is not a toxic concept. You have to be willing to give it your all to be able to have your life give it all back to you. And hustling is very humbling because when you're spending all of your time chasing your passion and following your dreams, you understand when others are doing it too. So it stops us from keeping unrealistic expectations from each other. It helps us come from a place of empathy rather than a place of sympathy towards our peers and our friends. Build your support islands. When you want to work as much as you would need to to follow your passion, you need to have support islands who know you and who recognize the fire within you and who will recognize when you can and when you can't. There are days that I am finishing set at 11 p.m., rushing across town in metros and trains, trying to make it in time for my roommate's birthday at midnight. There are days when I've wrapped up shoots, taken the first flight out to make it for my childhood best friend's wedding. There are days I work overnight, set alarms for 6 a.m. because I know my parents are going to leave for work and I won't be able to see them through the day. But there are also days when I miss my sister's birthday eve celebrations, when I don't attend my mom's award shows, when I'm not there if my friends are going through a hard time. You have to know who you can rely on during these times because these people will help you make progress in your path rather than add obstacles to it. So spend your time investing in the relations that will become your ultimate support islands later. My sister takes flights on an hour's notice if she knows I have an impending health complication coming up. My mom has pulled swords out on battlefields protecting me from some of the societies and her own fears. My father, who toured throughout my childhood, worked late nights in my teens, has now become a literal marshmallow in my adult life, pouring juices down my throat, holding my hand through procedures, and making sure that I am there wherever I need to be, despite what his rational thought might tell him. And then, I have friends who pack lunches and clothes and transport them across the town to sets wherever I am, however I am living, just so I can eat a proper meal and I can turn up to set fresh the next day. So build your support islands, invest in these relationships that make the effort seem worthwhile because you will have to put double the effort to at least show up in every aspect of your life if you want to live a full life. And I want to live a very full life. So, as Instagram says, find your tribe and love them hard. It was Yash Chopra Ji's birthday day before yesterday. And I am someone who's very uh, inspired by him. I also love the spirit he embodies. 
I'd heard in an interview that he'd said that when he goes, he will go with his boots on. And during his final months, he was creating Jab Tak Hai Jaan in the mountains of Kashmir and the Himalayas, breathing his life into his passion project, immortalizing his essence forever. I want to be immortal, but not as my physical being. I want to be immortal as the emotion that inspires my friends, the love that wraps my parents, the light that shines on my sister, and the immense energy and passion that fuels my work. I want to tell stories in real and on real about the beliefs that shaped me, the passions that drove me, and the people who loved me. And I made this choice without actually understanding the cost I'd have to pay for it. But if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Third time over, not even a question. Because as the ever-inspiring Helen Keller once told us, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. So find your passion and let it kill you. Because as a filmmaker, I know a thing or two about endings, however happy, sad, or bittersweet. An ending is a culmination of the protagonist's journey. And this journey goes on. And sometimes you have to wake up and do it all over again the same way, maybe a different way. Go back to the same way. But you have to be willing to get up and do it once again. And over and over and over and over and over again. So, before I wrap, the last thing that I want to leave you guys with. My years of being in like filmmaking have taught me that passion has no substitute. Hard work cannot only be your driving source. You also have to invest in making time to make your life full of passion in every aspect. And that's why I conclude by this, with this poem, The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Thank you.